always Rose there? No, oh, no because yeah. she'll join us in. She's uh, off on leave, right? Yeah. Kari, are you able to handle yeah. that? Okay. All right. Uh, welcome, everybody. And uh, we're going to be doing a few procedural organizational things to get started. Do we have a lot of people out there? who have dialed in, or is it really uh, just us? No, one person on the iPhone. Okay. Um, so our first order of business is to elect a chair and a vice chair. And I will now open the floor to nominations for the office of chair. I would nominate Ann Winchester as chair. Thank you. I'd second that. <laughs> Thanks, Ann. <laughs> okay, it's been sec for, uh, nominated and seconded. Um, if, if, any other nominations? Okay. Oh, yes, sure. <laughs> On a temporary No, well, basis. what are you doing, John? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> the, Juggling the Yeah, the owl uh, <laughs> took a nosedive, uh, but we, we got it. Okay, um, I'm going to close nominations then, and uh, since there's only one, I'll just say all in favor. Aye. Aye. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> Any opposed? Okay. I can't hear. Oh. Hold on for a second. Uh, oh, I think I. Uh, you. How's that? Better? There we go. Yep. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was like, oops. Or anything. Okay. Uh, let's so take get a, a look at all the audience members. Okay. <laughs> let's uh, take nominations for vice chair. I nominate Jordan. <laughs> this is a little silly in a way. Second that. Does Jordan wish to be nominated? Sure. Any other nominations? All right, I'm going to close nominations. All in favor, please say aye. 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 And we have aye. officers. Thank aye. You. Thank you, Donnie. Um, so we have our officers for now. Um, we also need to adopt rules of procedure. We have to do this every March. Um, it took us so long to do it last year that we adopted the rules of procedure on January 8th of this year. Um, having These are the rules that you'll recall establish um, the processes we follow during meetings, um, when the regular meetings are, uh, et cetera. And um, Kari, I think, put them in your Google Docs so you had a chance to refresh your memory. Would anybody like to... Um, offer any changes? Are you all happy with those rules as written? Uh, I'm pretty happy with uh, the way that they were modified and um, would make a motion to accept uh, them or readopt them uh, as they were passed uh, in January. Okay. I'll second. And second. Is there any discussion? Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 So that establishes our regular meeting at 6 o'clock. Um, so we'll continue that, which I'm sure Donnie will approve of. <laughs> um, of course, if it stops snowing soon. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, finally, we have to reappoint liaisons. I'm thinking we still need, uh, I wrote down on the agenda, uh, Curtis Pond Dam, IT, and Shed, and I think we need the first and the third. I'm not sure we need an IT liaison anymore. Jordan, what do you think? I mean, I think that's kind of becoming a staff function now. <clears throat> yeah, it, it is. Uh, I committed to trying to bring some of the file sharing stuff across the finish line uh, for shortly after um, town meeting for the new select board, and I'd say that's pretty close, so I think by next uh, by next meeting, we should be able to kind of start transferring over to that, and then yeah. that should be good to go at that point. And we just need to have a conversation, and we can. Yeah. Yeah, and you, yeah. you can just report report on it. We don't have to actually officially appoint a liaison. No, I don't think so. But would you all agree we still need a Curtis Pond liaison who yeah. shall recuse herself from votes <laughs> on that topic and on the um, the court case before us? Yeah. That's okay. true. Okay. Do the same people want to keep serving? Jamie, you want you want to keep being Curtis Pond? Yes. Um, Anne and Jordan, you want to continue with the court case? Uh, I read it. I mean, I can't speak for Jordan, but 
<laughs> uh, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I've got some lingering to do's. Um, I, somewhat new to that is, is kind of looping in um, at Kari as well, but um, but I think that's wholly wholly appropriate given his okay. his role in the, in the town. So I, I don't think there needs to be any kind of official appointment there. So yeah, I guess if, uh, just carrying on with Ann and I for for now has been working pretty okay. well. Then I'll take a nomination to appoint uh, Jamie to be Curtis Pond Dem liaison and Anne and Anne T and Jordan to be um, liaisons to the court, the litigation that we're, we are currently so moved. going forward with. All right. Second. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Great. Thank you. The other iPhone is, is Rose. Ah. Oh. Oh, the iPhone is Rose? Yeah. Oh, I see somebody else has joined us. Yeah, Douglas Mueller. Okay. Yes, Barbara. Do you, do you also want to do the same for the policy review committee? That's not really a liaison. Okay. That's sort of a, that's a sub Certainly not. Okay. I just wanted to ask. Okay, thank you. Yeah. I don't think. Does anybody disagree with that? Okay. Um, let's see. Are there any additions or changes to the agenda people would like to propose? Um, yes. Ah. Um, under the Curtis Pond Dam update, um, I have an update on a permit which is uh, signed by some parties, will be signed by all parties very soon. Um, I think I'm going to chat with Kari and Donnie some more, and then maybe we can revisit it in a couple of weeks. Okay. And we'll so we don't take up a lot of time today. Ann and I had been discussing, um, talk, talking a little more about um, how we communicate with the town about our road conditions. Mm -hmm. And, um, but Ann says, well, you want me to put that on the next agenda, Ann? Please. Um, okay, the minutes done by Rose were in your folders. Anybody have any suggested changes to the minutes? If not, would somebody like to move them? Uh, so moved. And we have a second. Second. Okay, discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Minutes are Sorry, what was that? I said aye. <laughs> yeah, sorry, thought I heard somebody talking. Um, all right, you've also seen the board orders in your packet. Um, Jordan has the full packet here, if anybody wants to look at them further. Are you ready to vote on them? Okay. Uh, yeah. Somebody like to move that we approve and sign the board orders? Uh, I'd make a motion to approve and sign the board orders as uh, circulated previously by Kari. Second. And Jamie seconds. Um, second. Okay, we got two seconds. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 And that's. Okay, is there a well, page those will come to around. Sign. Three of us will sign them, and that'll be. Is it Mr. Up here. Okay, now we're up to the. Um, Cartography Associates uh, mapping project. And Kari, I love these memos you've been putting in our oh, files. Good, good, these yeah. are so helpful and they save us an enormous amount of time. Yeah, yeah. and uh, of course, we, we've got um, $3,000 in next year's budget set aside and the balance is going to be paid out of the planning reserve fund. So that could be done at any time. Um, we didn't really talk specifically about the payment schedule um, with um, Franco. Franco, um, um, perhaps we'll, perhaps you should just 
authorize me to execute to, this. To, yeah. And just work out. And at the same time, we have to, according to the contract, we have to appoint a liaison who's going to be responsible. Did you all see that? For um, making sure that they get the information that they're going to plug into the maps. So you would, whoever it is would be working with John McCullough and the listers and uh, probably the Planning Commission and the Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission to get all the data and work with them. Yeah. Um, and I'm thinking that sh could be Kari, if Kari would. I would certainly coordinate that. And, you know, he'll, he'll know what he needs and where to get it as uh, well as I will, I'm sure. Yeah, and I suspect if there's a mapping aspect to pieces of that, Sarah would help as well. Mm -hmm. Right, mm -hmm. that's true. Yeah. yeah. I'd love to be like in, in the loop on those conversations just because I love that stuff, yeah. but uh, but can't commit to being terribly helpful and okay. at, cool. at the start. I'll but just copy you in. Yeah, if you want to copy me in or if at some point I could be of service, then I'd, please let me know. Okay. Um, or if your load shifts as the year kind of gets yeah. going. Because uh, uh, I get a sense of the scope of the work, you know, yeah. but mm -hmm. I can certainly you know, get them started. Cool. All right then, any other comments on the contract? <laughs> You've all had a chance to look at it. Questions, comments, thoughts? In that case, I'll take a motion to approve. Let me see, well, how are we gonna do this, Kari? Would you, are you gonna sign it on our behalf or are we signing it? Yeah, I think you're, you're, Oh, voting we have to approve to the contract and, and authorizing me to execute it. Yeah, I noticed the dates need to be changed yeah. on this document. Here, oh. do you have a, one that we can sign tonight? Um, no. With the no, dates I don't, corrected? I, don't think I, okay. I did bring that. Okay, well then, um, can it wait till next meeting if we approve yeah, it? Sure That's probably good enough for yeah. Franco. Okay. Yeah, okay. All right, so, then, then I'll take a motion to approve um, signing of the contract and to appoint Kari to be liaison to as we go forward with the contract. So moved. Jamie's moved it. Second. Jordan seconded. Further discussion? Uh oh, uh, one uh, additional piece is that you have to specifically authorize the pay, uh, the payment of balance out of the planning reserve fund. That, that's not something that I can do. The select board has to authorize that. Okay. So that money has been set aside for this. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's not specific. My <laughs> motion to Include achieve that. that. <laughs> and I heard Sandra in the back of my head. Yeah. Can that also wait for two weeks because that wasn't Warren? Uh, uh, that was Warren. That was. It was, it was approved the contract. That, that's. To, 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 but I thought you said you need to approve to, to, to appropriate the reserve funds. Isn't that part of the approving the contract? I, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> if, if it's, if, it, I'm sure it'll be I'm fine trying. to wait two weeks if that's the safer route to go. Um, okay. okay. Well, let's let's go ahead and just vote on it now. Yeah, just that's so fine. Be sure we've got it done. So does everybody understand the motion now? We're, we're approving the contract, we're authorizing, um, we're appointing Kari liaison, and we're authorizing payment out of the reserve fund. Which reserve fund? For is the planning reserve fund. The planning reserve fund for the the extra uh, the m amount above three thousand dollars. Right. All right. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. And if it turns out we have to, we'll have to sign it again next. Week. Yeah. Anyway. We'll so I'll get an update with the date, yeah. and then we'll warn it. Okay. All right, Municipal Climate Relief Fund loan for $100,000. Um, we just have a doc resolution here, but there were lots more documents in the um, packet, Kari. Yeah, so the, the resolution is the action that you're taking, and it basically um, authorizes all of the borrowing, and then there are, you're right, there are a number of signatures needed. In fact, Barbara just handed me this packet it came in the mail this afternoon, which is just the same documents. Somehow there's a, an additional signature page <laughs> for the board, but um, 
That's what we're looking for so we can go ahead and close later this month. Yeah, well, it looks to me like we have to sign this certification, certifying that we have signed the note payable. Does that happen at the closing? No, just like with the dam bond, all of this is prepared ahead of time. And Thomas, on our behalf, brings these documents to the closing. Okay. And the select board has to sign them all. Then there's a general obligation note. Yep. We have to sign that. That's right. And the resolution, which was in your packet. And, oh my gosh, there were several things here. Yeah, there's, there's a number of things. Um, the loan agreement we have yep. to sign. And then it looks like we have to sign Exhibit B of the loan agreement. Or Exhibit A. Um, With the specific schedule of payments. And we have to authorize the treasurer to sign the treasurer's certificate. So we have to do all those things to make that happen. Do we have a closing schedule? Uh, yeah, March 28th. Okay, so we better go ahead and take that vote tonight, and if yeah. we have to redo it on the 25th, fine, but we can at least start signing these things. Yeah, I agree. Okay, so does everybody understand that? There was a lot of complicated documents in your folder, and it turns out there are many things we have to sign. But essentially, we're borrowing this $100,000 at 1.3% for what the documents say is up to a year. If, if we choose not to repay within a year, then they will re amortize basically loan us that same, same, whatever the balance is at that time. And the balance is due at the end of the year. It, yes, but, but if we choose not to repay, then they will right. loan us that same amount for another but, year. But we can also pay in small in increments? We can pay at whatever time they will be like. It'll be applied to the principal. Yeah, and if it makes you feel better, folks, we got approved for the Moscow Woods, um, the FEMA approved 75% of the Moscow Yay. Woods. That's awesome. 333,000, that yeah. came in today. So that's exciting. That's awesome. Very good news. Yeah. So this loan is a much better interest. Yeah, yeah, so this will keep us going longer before we have to go to the bank, if at all. Right. So that's terrific. All right, so the motion will be to sign all the documents related to um, borrowing <laughs> money from the state. Yeah, I think, I think you should say you're, you're adopting the re resolution. We're adopting the resolution to, and, to, and, and, signing. and signing all the um, ancillary documents. Yeah. Uh, needed to borrow a hundred thousand dollars from the municipal climate relief fund. Correct. All right. Yeah. And somebody move that. So moved. Okay. Jordan's moved it. Second. Ann has seconded. Anything else? All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Okay. Public comments? Anybody? <laughs> from our oh yes, our public has something to say. Wait. I, I never uh, fail to have some comments. So I actually, this is on behalf of the Board of Abatement. Um, over the weekend, I emailed the chair and vice chair and the town clerk with several follow-up questions about where we are in the status of leading up to the next meeting on March 25th with the two abatement applicants. And one of them was just to confirm the start time. I did not recall seeing it officially announced what time the start of the next Board of Abatement meeting would be. And also, I observed and told them that I didn't think an hour would be long enough to meet with each of the two applicants again, get their status, what they've learned since we gave them their assignments and tasks, and then go into deliberative session and make a decision. So I'm here to ask with the select board, this meeting is just before the next select board meeting on March 25th, would the select board be willing to delay a, uh, start of the next select board to 6.30 so that the Board of Abatement could meet from 5 to 6.30. I think that uh, that should be fine. With the, what we've got so far on the agenda for that particular time is um, dealing with committees. Um, uh, we've got a couple of contract to sign, an MRIC contract, um, and we have to point Kari to be treasurer. Yeah. That's all I've got. Really quick. Yeah, I so, expect there will be a lot of Curtis Pond stuff yeah. at the following meeting, but probably not at that not meeting. 
And as, as things will come up, but yeah. it doesn't look like we're going to have a lot. So I don't have any problem with starting at 6.30. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? I think we need the time, so. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, then. Okay, thank you. I don't think we need to vote on that. This no. next meeting will start at 6.30. Yeah. Thanks, Barbara. Thank you. Anything else, Barbara? Okay. All right. Shall we have a discussion about town meeting? Um, it was wonderful. Yeah, it was, uh, it was really good. Uh, feedback I had received from various folks immediately after and through the week was, was really favorable. So that, you know, yeah. felt good. Yeah. Um, thank you to Kari and everybody else who put so much work into organizing the communication around it. I think it really helped a lot. You know, the feedback that I had received is that um, it was it was very beneficial that people had um, informative, uh, more kind of declarative uh, answers to, to the questions that came up as, you know, as opposed to, you know, more subjective type commentary um, that, that, that was appreciated. And I, I certainly noticed that too. So I think that helped quite a bit. Seems like we anticipated the questions pretty well. You can always count on people wanting to know where the money's going to go, right? Is, is there anything anybody noticed that we could have done better? Which were great. Well, for one thing, the, the, um, we'll be able to do a full blown hybrid meeting next time with yeah. just a little bit of preparation. We'll need a monitor, we'll need the owl. Um, yeah. you know, we, can, we can definitely do better in that way. It just wasn't really on the radar this time, but yeah. it's, it's not that hard. Yeah, yeah. Well, and Barbara and Tegan were just worked their fingers to the bone <laughs> getting ready for this thing. Yeah. Um, no, yeah, yeah. And uh, Barbara was the only one who'd been through it before. So kudos to Barbara for yeah. ma making that happen. Yeah, yeah. I want to echo that because I've done enough events to know that when it runs that smoothly, it doesn't happen <laughs> by accident. Yeah, There's yeah, a sure. million things, literally, that, that could have gone wrong. Mm -hmm. and, and the fact that you didn't notice any of that stuff right. means that, you know, and it had to be Barbara because she's the only one, like you said. <laughs> Next year, Tegan will know what she's doing yeah. too, but yeah. this year she didn't. That's right. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. And the lunch was wonderful. It was. I know you got a hand in that as well. Yeah, I solicited all the food, and Friends of Callis did the rest. Yeah, uh, I think that's the first. I'm <laughs> always pretty much the last in line at those things. And, and there's not there was much still left. Lots yeah. There was still lots of food this year. That was a first. Tegan and I got dinner out of it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Do we do uh, any kind of like head count on how many people? It, it seemed like there were fewer people this year than there were last year, anecdotally. But um, Are you looking for how many people? Uh, I can tell you how many people checked in at the checklist to get a four, oh, four voter right. card was 151. How does that compare? And, and to... we, we thought, looking at the room, we thought it was better attendance from last year. Oh, okay. But I thought it'd be more than 151. Yeah. But that's how many people checked in and got a voter card. I don't know if all you guys even checked in and got a voter card, so we would add your names to that. I did. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah, yeah I did. Huh. Okay. Do you well, know how many did last year? I'd have to go back yeah. and look. I'm sorry. No, I'm just <laughs> curious. So I mentioned this to a couple of people, but what I was really struck by is how powerful it is to have uh, just one person advocate for a position and if it's done well in a timely way. So for one, Donna Smyer, when she spoke about the delinquent tax rate penalty, that, I mean, I thought that um, the, the, at the most was going to be 4%, and based on Donna's comments, I think it swung, the pendulum mm -hmm. swung it. And the other one was Rick Keene, who spoke to the mm -hmm. uh, reserve fund for the highway, highway. department mm -hmm. and capital. And mm -hmm. I think that really made the difference. It just changed the, the nature of the discussion at that point. Yeah. So just something to keep in mind um, mm -hmm. when you're mm -hmm. enlist your allies. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Um, well, we're way ahead of schedule. 
Um, and are people coming to talk about the Curtis Pond Dam, Jeannie, or are you just going to make a report? I'm just going to make a report. Okay. Well, yeah. let's go, go for it then. Um, so there's been a lot of movement in the last couple of weeks. Um, I talked to Larry Hebert, the contractor. Um, he's at this point fine with the fact that we haven't signed a contract and just assuming it's going to happen. Um, he's turning down other work, so it's sort of a good faith uh, agreement um, and he's confident it'll come together and I'm confident it'll come together, so we're moving forward on that. He's out of town the last week of March. He's working, um, the contract will be very similar to the document that we already have that was part of the bid documents. Um, and we'll basically alter that and add things like payment structures, which he does a billing every two weeks um, as costs accrue and they go through it. Um, so we'll add some details and work out some details. And I'm imagining that Kari and I will sit down with him um, when he's back and ready to do so sometime in the first half of April. Um, so we won't even have a contract until April. Right. Yep. Um, in terms of the funding, uh, you had in your folder sources and uses um, from... When did we do that? Ten we days ago? We did that back in January. It hadn't changed. Um, I just wanted to... I did not, I don't th I think the copy I had in the folder was a PDF, so I didn't edit the one you all have, but um, I have updated numbers here. Oh. Um, the old pledge column at that time was 8,500. Mm -hmm. um, those have uh, all been collected except 75, 750, um, and that 750 will come in shortly to do it over a few payments. Um, the new pledges we had were uh, 160575 All of that has come in except $27,225. Um, and so that's going really well. Um, CPA checking account balance has gone up from fifty-seven twenty-four to twelve thousand three fifty-four, um, and the Maple Corner Community Center dam account balance has gone up from seventy-three fifty to one hundred and sixty-four thousand seventy-one dollars. Um, and I can email you all of this. Yeah, sure. Um, so basically, what that means is, as of our last meeting, the funding gap was 232,212. Uh, we've whittled that down to 209,900, so just under 10,000. Um, we are in the midst of negotiations between the Curtis Pond Association Executive Board um, and two local families who together are offering a um, low interest loan to the Curtis Pond Association um, for $200,000. And so that will essentially close the gap. The last nine or 10,000 will um, come in easily. Um, and so we expect that loan um, and the remaining, um, you know, roughly 30,000 in pledges to all be in our hands um, by the end of the month and transferred to the town sometime early next month. Um, and at that point, we will have uh, $1.2 million dollars earmarked in the town coffers um, for the dam project and be ready to sign the contract as soon as Larry is ready to do so. Um, the assumption at this point is the construction will start June 1st.
they'll probably start staging materials um, two weeks before that, depending on where we are in our mud season um, and what the roads can handle. Um, there's still one ongoing conversation happening. I'm going to be meeting with Kari and the engineers and some other Curtis Pond Association folks soon. Um, we're still figuring out a few things about the contract for uh, construction oversight. Um, there, we have a proposal for DNK to do it. We have not signed that aspect of the contract yet. Um, and there's some question has come up on whether it would be worth shopping around and getting somebody else to oversee the construction. And so we're just going to have a conversation and decide if it's worth uh, pursuing that to save, might save us $40,000 or something. Um, but there's pros and cons to both, both sides. Um, the only two outstanding permits are the Army Corps of Engineers permit, which requires sign off from the Army Corps of Engineers as well as State Historic Preservation. Um, myself and Michael at DNK and Elizabeth Peoples at Historic and Angela at Army Corps have been going back and forth on a near daily basis, uh, fine tuning the unbelievably minutia details of angles of signs, relationship to the river, like really detailed stuff. Um, I think that we, I know that we finally have a final draft of that document. I emailed it to you all 10 minutes ago when we were already in the meeting, because uh, I just got it just before the meeting. Um, it's still awaiting my signature and then one high up at Army Corps signature. So I um, would like to have you all authorize me to go ahead and sign it. Um, once I sign it, the high up at Army Corps of Engineers will sign it and it can all be finalized. Um, and then the only outstanding permit will be the Town of Callis permit, um, which John assures me is no big deal, it's ready to sign. He just likes to have a project, have all its other permits before issuing the Callis permit. Um, so now that that's all signed, he assures me that'll happen early this week. Questions for Jane? Okay. Yeah. Questions? The uh, private loan through the, for the CPA um, that is in negotiation, is that um, likely to create any kind of impediment for future uh, fundraising through the town at all? That it's not, or are there any conditions related to um, future fundraising for for other maintenance? Or is there just kind of a natural lifespan for that? So the loan is a three year loan. Um, we're, as part of the loan, we're, there's no spelled out monthly payment due, um, but it does say that money we raise for the purpose of paying back the loan has to go to servicing the loan. Sure and be transferred to the, the loaners within 30 days of receipt of the funds. Um, so I, I assume that for the three years, or however long it takes us to pay the loan back, it might be less than that, money the CPA raises will go to servicing the loan. Um, but certainly beyond that, I think there's plenty of opportunity to raise funds for other aspects of long-term maintenance. There's no, there's no, like, no uh, obligation to the town outside of, uh, in, in the event of a default of some sort, or it's just going to reopen the negotiation with the CPA? Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, it's completely separate from the town. Um, the CPA executive board will be the signatories. Mm -hmm. um, and our general plan for paying it back is to do a series of fundraisers this summer. We think that during construction will be a, an easier time to fundraise than post-construction. Um, there's a number of, of large donors who have said that they'll help with it. Um, but the general idea is to have a sustaining membership type program where people can sign up online through our existing online donor site um, to make a monthly contribution. Um, and then those will all be lumped and paid. Nice. Great work, Jamie. So Jamie, you're, you're absolutely confident that this in no way puts the town at risk for having to pay back this loan. I am. I'm more than happy to send the draft loan agreement to you all. We could have the town attorney look at it if you want. Um, the town isn't mentioned in it anywhere. Mm -hmm. The owner of the dam isn't mentioned it in anywhere. Um, it's a really pretty. Your, the, the correspondence Association is essentially going to gift this <coughs> money to the town. Right. So we're it's borrowing it and giving it to the town. Right. Yeah. So it's uh, that doesn't obligate the town to do anything that I can see. Right. Yeah. I and unless we sign something saying that we're obligated. Right. Here, we're yeah. Obligated. Um, and, and the, f yeah, it's, I'm, I'm not worried about that at all, but I'm happy to send it to whoever. And no, I'm okay. How do the others feel? I think having it? the lawyer, I'm oh, sorry, yeah. I think it would be good the lawyer review it just to. I mean, it, it sounds like it's covered, but it's a lot of money and it's being gifted and it's great. Congratulations, Jamie. That was like a lot of work to get this done. Um, but I think just double checking to ensure, because at least when we first started these conversations, it sounded like the town might be on the hook. So I, I appreciate that shifted, but. Well, and I'll, I'll clarify that the initial loan that was discussed was from a different person, and that person had been interested in Did loaning. Pick up <laughs> had been interested in loaning to the town, and only would loan for one year, um, and that was a non-starter on multiple fronts. And so this is a completely different loan that's not connected to the town. Yeah, I guess it, for me it would be good to just see what the final what the final agreement is before it's committed, and then yeah. make sure that we have um, like appropriately vetted the mechanism or agreement for the gift, so to speak. Just just because you know municipalities have funny have have you know very different rules, and you know I would think that um, Thomas would would be um, in a good position to counsel us on that relative to the Sounds bond okay. work. And then, yeah, and I, I just want to make it, you know, I assume that when it's handed over, it's going to say that it's going to go into a fund that we've already generated because we're going to be transferring other money. So we just want to make sure that, right. that that agreement, that, that it's structured that same way. Which, which we did that once. Right. And Thomas walked us through, I believe, the language that, I think the check from the community center, the community center, actually each organization had to, their boards had to sign something saying this is a, yeah. I forget the language. Yeah. But, okay. but right. you had already um, received those funds. This is based on a loan. So perhaps but we will have received the funds. Right. But, but, but if, yes. if the CPA were to default on this, loan, right. yes. we want to make sure that the town is in right. no way on that. Yes. Yeah, so we That's should, or yeah. or const, or constrained, I guess, you know, from yeah, from right. you know seeking other right. other financial mechanisms or something like that to 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 service the maintenance of the dam. You know, right. I mean, the, the, the 
there's going to be whatever is going to be the, for the construction, but um, that would be my my only my yeah. only concern during the during the term of the loan, I guess, right. um, and getting a better sense of what the conditions are to the CPA and landowners during the term of the loan, right? Relative to the town's right to do what it needs to as the dam owner, yeah. which we will be after yeah. after, after the September. completion of the dam, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So when we have a when you have a draft, I'm, I'm yeah, we have. I have a draft from them. We're countering with one or two additions to it, and that okay. they're going to have their attorney look at. So why don't we fine tune it a little yeah. bit more, um, and then I'll send it along. Other questions for Jamie? Were we supposed to be make act, taking action on anything particular today? Did you say oh, yeah. authorizing authorizing to do me to um, sign the Army Corps of Engineers, Army Corps of Engineers. Mm. on behalf of the town? Yes, and I can pull it up here. Um, I, Kari, I did email it at the beginning of the meeting to the select board. If you want to. If you have it and want to put it up there, oh, okay. Jamie, what does what does signing this mean? Does this commit the town to completing the project exactly the way they say, or why do we have to sign it? Um, for some reason, my computer is not opening it right now. But um, we've had to sign all of the permits as the applicant. Just to say we've received Just, them, thank you. Yeah, um, and this permit does spell out various aspects of the construction that are part of the plan. So there's a lot of stuff in the plan, like stone facing of the spillway that dam safety doesn't require. It's an expense we probably wouldn't have chosen. It was a condition of this permit to meet the historic preservation requirements. Um, so there's there's a, I mean, it's multiple pages long, lots of addendums of photo, aerial photos, and this is where the sign's going, this is where the dam's going. Um, I, I suppose that if something happened in construction, um, that the, bedrock was different than they expect it to be and something had to shift, that'll be a conversation that the contractors and the engineers and all the permit mm -hmm. folks who, you know, weigh on that would discuss. But it doesn't commit us to anything that isn't already part of the design of the project. Okay. So you need us uh, so that was just feedback. Oh, that was, okay. You need us I to- I have a quick question. Sure, yeah. Donnie, go ahead. Just because Jamie kind of touched on it there a little bit. Um, just out of curiosity here, I mean, if this project comes in $50,000 over budget or even, and let's say $10,000 over budget, are these people that are willing to uh, loan the Curtis Bond Association the money? going to cover those over costs as well? I mean, I think that's, uh, any project has risk of overages. We've built in what we think is a, a reasonable contingency to cover those overages. Um, I, I think that if it goes over the contingency, it's a, a dialogue that will be had about where those funds come from, but I think the CPA is committed to continue doing their part and and moving it forward. Larry won't be able to like, work beyond without approval a change order, right? right. A formal process to exceed the one point two million that would right. require the board's approval. However, it gets paid. Right. Yeah. Yeah, the, the contract is a not to exceed, is that right? It is. I believe there's one 
section in it that's time and materials. Right. And that's maybe just a round amount of concrete because they don't know exactly where the bedrock foundation is at the bottom. Um, and so they estimated that as... But I think that's the one piece that um, is, is subject to flexibility. Um, but a, as with any project in town, you know, things happen. But, but I think it's a pretty, pretty finite number. Okay, Donnie? Yep. Thanks. All right, um, we are not going to authorize you to sign the contract, obviously, and I'm not sure we need to authorize you to negotiate the contract. We can just do it. You're not going to authorize me to sign the so the permit. Oh, the permit. We do need to authorize right. you to sign the yes. permit, but it, it, on the agenda we um, right. had said that we might authorize you to sign the contract, which we're obviously not going not. to do tonight. Yeah. And I'm not sure we need to authorize you to negotiate. You can right. go ahead and negotiate. So the only thing we need to do is authorize you to sign the Army Corps of Engineers permit. Yep, and the, the signature page, um, it's signed by the Chief Regulatory Division, Tammy Turley of U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, um, and somebody from the Vermont Division of Historic Preservation. <coughs> Um, and then, so they're listed as the primary signatories, and then under words it says invited signatory, and it lists me as a select board member. Okay. All right. Would somebody like to move to authorize Jamie to sign the Army Corps of Engineer contract, I mean permit, on behalf of the select board? So moved. Okay, Jordan is moved. Is there a second? Okay. And a second. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Please say aye. aye. <laughs> I, I guess I abstain. You're abstaining. Did you vote? Yep, aye. Joe, Jordan's aye, aye. Donnie? Yep. yep, okay, good. Thank you. Anything else, Jamie, on that one? I don't think so. Okay. I think we're going to do it. <laughs> You're a miracle worker. <laughs> All right. Um, appointments. Barbara has been working very hard on um, these documents in which she has not only listed all the potential openings and positions we have to fill, she has contacted all the incumbents um, to see who would be willing to uh, serve and if uh, which ones were not. Would you like to sh talk us through these? Sure, Barbara? thank you. Yes, these two little pages represent a lot of work. So let's look at the one first for the annual appointments. We'll move on to committees and commissions later, but let's do the annual. Mm -hmm. So I'll tell you what my process was. Was the first step was back in January, I first showed the list to Ann Winchester and confirmed that at least her belief that the select board would like all these people reappointed, but you guys will be going into a session to discuss that. But at least I have her blessing to move forward with all of these people on behalf of the select board. So I then went to each of these individuals over the next month, lots of email communications, to let them know that their one-year term was expiring, would they be willing to be reappointed by the select board for another one-year term? So all of them in the first box section that says for reappointment are incumbents returning who have agreed to return if you guys choose to reappoint them. The next section down would be new annual appointments and so it's listed there by position and if we have already identified a new appointee who has agreed to serve in that position, they're listed there and to the far right is why, why we were having to find new people to be appointed. Um, the two little arrows next to David and Jared for CV Fiber alternate delegate 
is because for years, David has been the delegate and Jared has been the alternate, but David has stepped down as the delegate and he said, but he's willing to serve as the alternate, and so Jared is willing to be the dear. So they're just switching positions, but it makes it new for each of them. I have one new addition to add to this since I emailed this, or put it in your Google folder last Friday. Um, for the CVREMC representative, that's the Central Vermont Regional Emergency Management representative, you can see Betty Copeland has resigned. Um, Nick Emlin has uh, talked to Jake Aho, who is the vice chair of the Emergency Management Committee, and Jake has agreed to serve in that position. Great. So when you're ready to review this and make your decision, you can consider Jake Aho in that position. And may I just, I'm not sure if everybody on the board knew that Cole Bliss had resigned. So, yeah. effective last week. Last week. So we know we no longer have an animal control officer or a constable. Um, and then on the second page of this report, there are two um, annual appointments that the, our select board has con been continuing to make, but they're no longer statutorily mandatory. That's Inspector of Lumber and Weyer of Coal. I have talked to both Greg Pelchuk and John Stafford who serve in those roles and they're, they're both fine if you guys want to just eliminate those positions for the town of Callis. Uh, so you can consider that and let me know. If you choose to keep them, both Greg and John are willing to continue serving and be reappointed. So once you make that decision, just let me know. Did you ask them, Barbara, if they ever did anything in these positions? So uh, Greg Pelcha has been doing, has been Inspector of Lumber for years and never, in fact, maybe we should let Rose answer if he ever gets called on. Uh, John Stafford never gets called on. He's only been the uh, waiter of coal for like just under a year. I think and Greg he, was the waiter of coal before John, so he, he would do that. And Greg can no longer do it. If somebody years ago said that's a conflict of yeah. interest since he also owns <laughs> a coal company. <laughs> But you might want to, Rose, do you want to unmute yourself and answer if Greg ever gets called on to do anything as Inspector of Lumber? She may not be able to. She just emailed me. Okay. okay. Not to my knowledge. Uh, Rose is actually the one who responded and said that he would be fine if you discontinued that role in Callis. Okay. Okay, any other questions on the annual appointment? No, that's pretty straightforward. Thank you, Barbara. You're welcome. Okay, so we'll move on to the Boards, Committees, and Commissions, which is the other report. And the way I started here was back in January, I went to each of the Board, Committee, and Commission chairs to let them know who on their uh, membership's term was ending in March to confirm with that chair that he or she would want that committee member to be reappointed. That once I heard from all the committee chairs, then I went to the individuals whose terms are ending this month to see if they wanted to be uh, reappointed for another three, four, three, four or five year term, depending on what it is. No, I guess only cemetery commissions, commissioners are five year terms. And so the first block are people who say, yes, I would like to be reappointed for, by the select board for another term. The next one, the next set of uh, names are where we now have vacancies, and I've given you reasons why we have vacancies. Um, I'm going to bring your attention to the Conservation Commission. Uh, we, they have had two vacancies for a long time. I got an email from Larry Bush at the end of last week. When I go back to them again, one more time, I keep going back to them asking, do you have somebody to nominate? for these uh, vacant seats. And Larry said that he's been on the Conservation Commission for a long, long time. They've never had more than seven people on the commission, and he would be fine if the select board chooses to eliminate the additional two seats so they would no longer have vacant seats. So once you have that discussion and decide, let me know. The rest of these, I continue to work on recruitment to try to find, but you guys may also know, I've given several names to Ann. 
uh, for possible new appointments, uh, which she will be discussing with the select board when you guys meet on this. And then, also before the select board, is if you would like to develop an energy committee. You might recall that when Sam Lash was here from CBRPC a month ago, she recommended a, a new energy committee. Jan Olson, who was the chair of the Planning Commission, strongly endorses that, says it should be about five to seven people. So if the select board would like to create a new energy commit committee, you would need to determine how many seats do you want it to be, how long the length of term would be, and would Cal's residency be required? Didn't, didn't Nick make a pro didn't the committee make a proposal about that? The planning committee, the planning commission. Oh no, I'm sorry, I'm confusing it with um, emergency <laughs> management. Mm -hmm. Oh yes, okay, okay. I can't tell you that I have an email from Jan Olson who does strongly encourage it. Didn't we used to have one? Yes. We've. I, I, okay, good. You know better. I know we have an energy coordinator who's been on, who's been on for a while, but I don't see him on uh, Zoom now. Is that Douglas? No, Bill, that was it's Bill, Bill Powell. Oh, right. Bill yeah. Powell. Okay, and then the last thing I'd like to recommend to the select board. This is just coming from me. Is when you talk about all these boards, committees, and commissions, maybe consider adding a new responsibility to each of them, which is for them to be responsible to research, identify, and apply for funding of projects and activities. Um, and, and that would include, if they get a grant, their post-grant management, um, as opposed to just always come to the select board and asking for $5,000 for this or whatever. But let them start getting, finding the funding for their projects and activities. So, any questions on this report? Uh, okay, I, I have, you I have one, one comment there, yes. Barbara, where you put in the development review board, you put Rachel Seelig in there. She's actually already a member and has her own term, so she wouldn't be filling out Ryan's term. I would just take that name out. Oh, you know what? I meant to put her under, oh, I meant to put her name under planning commission. That's what happened. This all happened on Friday. That's right. She's yeah, understood to be that, the Thank commission. you very much. Okay. Yeah, that is correct. Rachel dropped her down to the planning commission, which term ending 2026 or 2027? Uh, we'll, we have to talk about that. Okay. Yeah. And she'll stay on she will. DRB, do both. And not only that, I recruited her to be a Curtis Pond Dan mom. <laughs> not, not, I'm sorry, Curtis Pond Island. Island. Yeah. Uh, oversight person, wow. so she's happy. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be a lot more responsibility as the water level is uh, <laughs> That's right. reduced. That's right. A lot more surface yeah, area getting to bigger. oversee. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, any more questions about that? I, um, I would like us, at, uh, when we're finished with uh, everything else, to go into executive session to discuss this because we might actually want to talk about actual people, and we shouldn't do that in public. So um, I'd like to put that aside, as long as you ask Barbara all the questions you want. Okay, thanks Barbara. What wow. incredible work. Hey, it's what I do. It's what you do, it's true, it's what you do. Uh, what they do with my agenda. Okay, let me see. Um, and we're all ready to report. Is Tegan? Tegan's there. Hey, Tegan, congratulations to you also on a wonderful town meeting. And Thank what, you. what have you been doing with yourself since then? Oh, you know, just lounging. <laughs> <laughs> Which uh, tropical Barbara. paradise did you retreat to? Exactly. And by that, it's been today my house with my sick kid. Um, <laughs> So but there's a lot of steps afterward. There are steps that Barbara and I didn't even know about that we're learning about as I dig into uh, some of the resources available to town clerks in the aftermath of uh, town meeting. So we're figuring that out. There's a lot of there's a lot of town meeting follow up. There's a lot of uh, ballots we have to, from what I gather, put into the computer every person and how many ballots they were issued and how many ballots they returned 
Uh, we are working with the school district to figure out what the next steps are for the next school budget vote. Um, we're cleaning up the office. There are certificates, there are oaths of office. There's a lot going on. Uh, I know Barbara was digging into the dog licenses that we had maybe fallen a few days behind on. And there's a few things that I didn't get done last week that now need to get done also. Um, but other than that, this is in theory, a quieter time in the town clerk's office. This next, you know, six weeks or so, maybe longer, uh, but I'm sure we'll have plenty to keep ourselves occupied. Uh, between the Board of Abatement and the extra election and just continuing to get my bearings. Since you brought it up, do we, do you and Donnie technically need to take an oath of office since you're being... It's been done. Oh, you did. Okay. Mm -hmm. Never mind. And well, Jamie, nice too. Donnie nice work. And, and, and Donnie and Jamie. Oh, them, so. okay. Thank you. Oh, and I, I reappointed Barbara as the <laughs> All right. Thanks, Deacon. Mm -hmm. Cover, you have more to tell us than you yeah, already have? Yeah, I think so. It's been an interesting couple of days with the roads. Uh, yesterday, the crew labored for quite a while, and it was very slow going because of how muddy it was and wet, heavy snow on top of that. Um, and it, it was put it this way, Ed, Ed Rahal said it, he had never seen conditions like that before in all his time. So um, they didn't get very far yesterday. They um, Luckily this morning it had firmed up enough that they were able to, to do more. Um, they did get over all the roads today, some of them twice. Um, we did, I, we fielded quite a few complaints um, and there's a couple of front porch forum posts I just saw. Um, uh, and whatever condition they are, it's in now, it's gonna be worse in the, in the, probably by tomorrow afternoon because it's gonna be in the, in the 40s the rest of the week. So we're back, gonna be back to the next season. Um, okay. So yeah, so it's, a, it's an ongoing uh, challenge. Uh, one thing that um, we observed last week is they did quite a bit of road, uh, work on the two roads that were closed to the school buses, which was Loose and Bliss Pond. And Loose was very frustrating because they were applying, they applied at least a dozen loads of gravel, but it kept just sinking into, into the mud. So Donnie's recommendation was just to go with larger stone, because um, that's sort of all you can do, even though that's not ideal for grading season. Um, it is hopefully more effective. So lesson learned on that one. Um, can I ask a question? If, yeah. you do, if you put down a larger stone, do you put something smaller on top to to save tires a little bit? I think, I think you know, I'm, I'm not sure. I think, go ahead, Donnie. You, you don't this time of year, no. Uh, I, I, my recommendation to John was to use inch and a half clean stone. Um, what they're purchasing right now is a slate material and, uh, if you can picture a big, you know, mud hole and then throwing a bunch of gravel in it, it just makes more mud. It doesn't actually do anything except for create more mud. Whereas the stone is, is more effective for this time of year, but really unfortunate when they start grading. Um, this is all stuff that'll come back out and they will have to, once everything kind of firms up, we'll have to put some smaller material on top. I think part of the problem right now was the availability of getting material. There's, um, as far as I'm aware, there's only two pits locally around here that are even open and crushing at this point. Um, so that makes it a little difficult as well. Are they, are they using granite at all, Donnie? Or are they? That was that was my suggestion. I told them to, I, well, I didn't tell him to do anything. My suggestion was if it was mine, I would be using more of a fractured stone versus a slate stone. Yeah. The slate stone, the problem is, is it works really well, except for once it's already submerged in mud, then it doesn't. Yeah. Right. They, they definitely did use gravel in January. And I suspect that was associated with some of those tire punctures, which I um, spoke with someone today. 
So yeah. <laughs> I had I was a you had, you were the I was a, I was a recipient of two two slate gravel punctures. Yeah. Uh, thankfully I was close enough to needing new tires that I wasn't too annoyed. But um, uh, but yeah, no, I, it, it's it's a real challenge this time of year, and you know, as as detrimental as the more angular stuff is, you know, for later, it it's a little easier on tires and it compacts a little bit better given the conditions, or at least yeah. doesn't disappear. If it makes the road passable, I mean, I think some right. of the more strenuous complaints we've gotten about about safety, uh, you know, yeah. emergency vehicles, access, right? right. Yeah. yeah. Which is valid. So um, the other thing is we haven't closed February uh, accounting period yet because Sanders been away. We'll do that on Wednesday. But I'm I'm pretty sure that we've reached our annual budget for gravel already, and we, we still have um, the rest of the month season to go. So this uh, so one of my projects will be to go through the budget in great detail and see where can we pull back in other places because we're going to need to spend more money. Well, I also so think I, with oh, go ahead, Donnie. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, I, was, I was just <clears throat> kind of curious. I, I mean, the Moscow Woods um, approval was 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 huge. Um, and yeah. I guess depending on how quickly some of the rest of the project approvals come through, would we be in a position to start utilizing either the it's not a cash concern. No, it's a, okay. It's, it's a just budget. a budget concern. It's a budget, you know, and we, we want to stay within our budget. I mean, I, I, that's a learning curve for me as well. What, what does it mean to go into deficit mode? Certainly, Callus has done that in the past. Um, and, and, um, but we're going to do our best to avoid that. Yeah. But from a, I agree, from a cash position, I'm feeling much relieved that that. that and Sandra assures me it's not the end of the world if we do go into a deficit. It's, it's not will also, if she says we're the town will still be here twenty yeah. years from yeah. now. Yeah. Um, in we, particular, with the we're with have roads, right? Because roads has has yeah. historically always had a, a surplus. Um, that's how I remembered it. Well, in the past, the surplus, surplus. has just rolled into the fund balance. Right. right. Um, in the future, it will roll into the equipment. Even if the fund balance, you know, goes negative and you have to borrow for cash, that's not the end of the world, but it's, yeah. we want to avoid it. Uh, Donnie had uh, something to say. I, I was just going to say that I think the, the usage of the material has been up just because of what they've been using isn't working as well. So they're dumping twice as much material into it as they would versus you know stone so i think that'll that'll also help as far as cost yeah is there any way to, to have, have we revisited the stockpiling conversation like temporary stockpiling uh around around town through the rest of the month season which well um i just thought i just spoke with donnie today about the Pelchek's pit, and he, he confirmed he's not going to pursue that opportunity. So I'll maybe talk to Rose and Greg about because that was the idea. Of, could we use that that quarry as a as a staging area for material, you know, and get larger loads, you know, something like tractor trailer, could get in and out of and have it, you know, in a, in another dispersed location. Um, yeah. Moving on to the next next, uh, I meant to include this in the memo and, and forgot. We had a it, we had an accident. One of the crew backed a new pickup truck into a uh, 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 mailbox. Mailbox was fine. Six thousand dollar estimate on the repair to the truck bed. Uh, it'll be fully covered by by our insurance. So just needed to let you know that. Uh, and mentioned the FEMA. Um, I was on a call today um, talking about the Budget Adjustment Act, which was which Mark Mahali talked about at um, town meeting. They described it as Mark did. You know, the basically we're getting reimbursed for all but 2.2 percent if the governor signs it this week, and then this additional grant money would almost make us whole for all FEMA reimbursement. So I don't understand 
understand that though. This is the JFO spreadsheet. The Joint Fiscal that, Office did this spreadsheet, yeah. and they say that we're getting ninety percent from FEMA. From FEMA, but we're not. We're getting seventy-five. The, the what we're being told is that there will be an additional um, check cut by FEMA. Now, I, I, and I don't fully understand it. I don't get how the state has any say over how much. I guess the state has insight into the entire pot of money that's available to Vermont for that particular disaster and has determined that FEMA can reimburse 90% and that they will cover 7.8 and, the, and then it's just 2.2. That would be amazing. And then, the, and then that, you know, that spreadsheet, they, the lots of caveats, it's an estimate, but the $30,000 grant yeah. that's being provided, um, they emphasize that that's really an estimate that, you know, they're waiting to see what the final guidance is and what our allocation will be, but if, if it's anywhere close, we'll basically be made whole. Yeah, um, when I looked at this, if it all works out the way they put in here, we lined up paying something like $400 for the total FEMA, I mean, flood damage. Yeah. And that <laughs> includes our road crews' wages. Yeah, I mean, I'll believe That's that when I one. see it. <laughs> so anyway, uh, more to come on that one. And then, um, so uh, I've been doing a lot of training on treasurer roles at the uh, accounts payable, learning how to close the uh, period this month, payroll. Um, and I'm going to spend some more time with Wendy Wilton on, on the, what she does for us in terms of payroll so we can bring all of that back in-house. And then the monthly bank reconciliation, which best practice is to have the person that's doing accounts payable be separate. It's a, it's a control so that someone could you know, make errors in their favor. Um, so I talked with Sandra. She, she's going to continue to serve as she's willing to as our delinquent tax collector. I asked if she had any interest in doing these monthly bank reconciliations uh, as a, you know, additional work, and she's, she told me today no. So I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna speak with Wendy next about what will it cost us to, for you to continue doing that. It takes her about two hours a month. Um, and then I'll develop that into the contracts, the NEMRIC contracts, there's more than one um, for the next year, which starts in April, and that'll be something is that is it possible we won't need an assistant treasurer if that if we did it that way? Maybe, yeah. Maybe. The assistant treasurer that that would really be about accounts payable and payroll, the very basic data entry parts. Mm -hmm. And you know, I've I've done a little bit of it now, so let me get let me get more practiced in it, and then I can judge that. But I don't know. It doesn't seem that all that time consuming. Mm -hmm. We'll see. Um, when are you going to give us our next, I guess it'll be you, our next, um, what do you call it, the, the monthly statement? A financial report? Yeah. That'll be next time. That'll We're just waiting to close. Time. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That'll, that'll be an important one because then we'll be yeah. two-thirds of the way through the fiscal year. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Questions for Kari? Thanks, Kari. Thanks, Kari. Um, See, we already heard about Curtis Pond. Jordan, you got anything on IT? I don't know that you're no Not, longer on yeah. the <laughs> Not other than what I had shared earlier. Okay. Um, Jordan and Dan, anything on the litigation? Um, I, not anything that, that requires discussion at this point. I mean, it's kind of status quo. Um, Uh, I think by the next meeting we should have probably a warned agenda item um, for consideration, um, but I'll circulate some communication on that. Okay. The, for the ordinance? Yeah. Yeah. For ordinance? Oh, you want uh, for amending the animal control ordinance? Mm -hmm. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah, it was recommended that we make some uh, some revisions to the existing one just to make it fit um, the actions that, that we that we would like to take in the future and um, and and kind of foresee situations that are <laughs> yeah anyway so and it's gotten a little 
uh, Kari and I spent some time uh, going going over and talking through some things and, and felt like there there could be some some more language in there um, that was more explicit about um, pr more procedural stuff right. that I think would benefit just the town in general um, uh, to clarify uh, our, our position and actions and um, so we're gonna is Make that something changes. that the, the policy committee will work on? Um, not necessarily. Um, okay. If we do want the attorney to review it. Yeah, the attorney does need to review it. That's going to take a little bit of time, I, yep. I predict. Yep. Okay. Hopefully with town meeting behind us, they'll, they'll be a little more responsive. Okay. Yep. Yeah, have they reviewed the personnel policy yet? That's a great question. I haven't seen if they're working. Uh, I called, I emailed them Thursday, I think it was, and I have not heard back yet, so I will try them again tomorrow, probably. Thank you, Tegan. All right, anything else? That's the end of our agenda, except that um, I'm going to suggest now we go into executive session under 1 VSA section 313A3 regarding the appointment or employment or evaluation of a public officer or employee. And um, I don't think I need to read the rest. Um, does anybody have anything they want to say before we do that? All right, I think what we'll do is if we do that, then we'll just, uh, Donnie and Ann will stay on, and we'll do it by email. Um, and we'll by Zoom. By Zoom. I'm sorry, I said email. Yeah, by Zoom. Sorry, I'm trying to think of three things at once. Um, so, I guess I'll take a motion to go into executive session and to invite Kari to come in with us under one VSA three thirteen eight three. So moved. Okay, it's been moved. Is there a second? Second. Jamie second. second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Aye. Thanks, everybody. So we'll have to ask you all to leave. We'll